from the cream. Welcome to the Spooky Nerd Club, everyone. I'm your host, Ray. Hi. <laughs> Today we have a new Tales from the Crypt episode called Dig That Cat. He's real gone. I can't say gone. No other way besides that. But kind of. <laughs> it's just my accent. <laughs> This episode premiered on June 10th, 1989, which makes me realize the first three episodes that Tales from the Crypt drop were all on the same day. This show stars Joe Panto Liano. You know him from The Matrix, Memento, Bad Boys, The Fugitive. It also stars Gustav Vintas from um, Lethal Weapon and Robert Wool from, I don't know what this title is, but... <laughs> He's from another movie, too. And then we also have Kathleen York from In the Dark and The West Wing. This short was also directed by Richard Donner. And as usual, we're going to jump right into it. And Horror Girl is going to give us a breakdown of the script. You might hear me intervene here and there. But let's jump right into it. This is the story of Ulrich the Undying. A sideshow performer who found death not only fun... But profitable. So we open at the Big Top Carnival, and it looks like it's thriving. There's a bunch of people there. It's packed with crowds, fancy jugglers, a bearded lady, and a kid working as a clown. We meet the carnival boss, who invites the crowd to witness two extraordinary shows. Tonight, a special show. Two shows in one. The Tragedy of Death and the Miracle of Resurrection! Just like Jesus. <laughs> and <laughs> the seats are completely filled for this show. The ringmaster presents Ulrich the Undying, who is set to be buried alive in a coffin where he will face suffocation. The burial takes place at midnight, and he will not be released until 12 hours later, <laughs> horror girl. 12 hours later. I got it. 12 hours later. Honestly, what a boring show. <laughs> <laughs> right so you guys are just gonna bury this dude to death but we can't see the results until tomorrow i don't know it, it seems very underwhelming it's like i guess at that time people cared about that kind of shit that was like good entertainment but for yeah. me i don't know if you were putting on a show like what kind of stunt would you do instead of that um, I want to be, like, blown out of a cannonball, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> want to get shot out of a cannonball. That's a good one. I guess I would want to be sawed in half. <laughs> I want to do that stunt. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> the crowd chants Ulrich's name as he steps into the coffin and bids farewell. We're now in the closed coffin with Ulrich as he lights a candle and talks directly to us. When they dig me up, I'll be dead. It's like all those bastards want me to be. But I won't stay that way. I remember the day it all began. Uh-oh, we have another narrator. <laughs> Niles, you remember Niles? We eat shit and shit eats us. Of course, how could I forget? <laughs> <laughs> We flash back to when Ulrich was a bum on the street and a random man approaches him. He's in a suit because he's rich. He asks Ulrich if he would like to be rich too. How would you like to be rich? Hey, get out. Richer than you ever thought possible. Richer than you ever dreamed of. This money, my life savings, will be yours. If you consent to a small experiment. <sighs> You know, when that scene happened, I was just like, where are these kind of people like in my life? Would you consider doing something like that if a doctor <laughs> came up to you and you were just like a f bum on the street? I would do it. I think I would do it, I guess, if it was that bad and I had really nothing to lose. All right. So the rich man leads Ulrich to the lab where he shows him a CAT scan, literally a f CAT scan. He explains how cats have glands in their brains that actually grant them nine lives. I love how, like, this illusion of nine lives with cats is, like, just a reality in the yeah. show. So, it's fun. Whatever. He wants to give Ulrich nine lives by surgically inserting the cat's gland into Ulrich's head. Into my brain? Oh, so I can die nine times. Now you're making sense, Doc. Hey, wait a minute. If this don't work. If it doesn't work, you have no complaints. Ulrich dressed up in a hospital gown sits up in pain after waking up from this from this procedure. The doctor, <laughs> thrilled with the outcome, informs Ulrich that he now has nine lives. 
Ulrich is rightfully skeptical, like everyone should be. So Oof. Doc just pulls out a <laughs> banger and shoots him right in the head like a psycho. <laughs> and your boy is dead. At least we think for now. There's no doubt about it. No! Welcome back to life, my friend. You burst! You tried to kill me! I didn't try to kill you. I did kill you. But, yeah. <laughs> That's one life right there. <laughs> I love that part, honestly. So Ulrich raises the first question we'd all ask in that position. When do I get my money? Doc tries to hit him with that pyramid scheme talk, asking how Ulrich... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Right, no. Hey, yo, Doc tried to hit me with that pyramid scheme. <laughs> so Doc tries to hit him with that pyramid scheme talk, asking how Oric would like to make a thousand times more money for the both of them by using his new talent. Enough to finance my years of my longevity research and enough, of course, to buy you an ocean of alcohol. So wasn't it bold of him to assume he literally only cares about alcohol? <laughs> First of all, <laughs> that was kind of up. He was struggling <laughs> on the streets. Like, let the man live. He probably did only care about alcohol at this point. But, I mean, can you blame him, really? Hey, Doc, I'll take $100 for this procedure. <laughs> <laughs> so the smooth talk worked, leading Ulrich to recognize the potential to earn millions with his talent. The scene shifts to Doc talking to the carnival boss as they walk through the carnival in a rough state of mind. The undying is different. You see, he doesn't escape. He actually dies right before your eyes. That's why we can only schedule a limited number of performances. Okay, strange love, I'll give it a shot. I hope it works. I can use the money. My freaks need a new shoe. So I just want to know, if you had this power, like, what would you do with it? Would you still be like a sideshow kind of act, kind of how he is doing? Or would you save it for a rainy day? No, I wouldn't do any of those things. Here we go. So, number one, All right. on my eighth life, I'm going to go back to that doctor and have him put in a new gland for me so I can have nine more. But I don't intend I don't intend to use all eight of them really quick. I'm just going to use it for, well, I probably would have one throwaway one where I would, like, just do something. But then I would, like, go do Daredevil stuff that I think <laughs> might kill me that I'm afraid of. That way, if I did die, you know, and if I didn't, I still had eight more lives, you know? So we then jump to Ulrich's first carnival performance, surrounded by a small, humble crowd. He's sitting in a tank where he'll remain underwater for a full hour. As his tank fills up, another carnival worker insists on having dinner with him later. Like, girl, he's kind of in the middle of something. Dinner with me later! Dinner! Ah! Eat! Eat with me? Eat with me? <laughs> <laughs> so Ulrich starts drowning, and the boss yells, Speed it up! <laughs> <laughs> Oric is clearly dead, and after an hour, they drain the tank and await his resurrection. Resurrection, Doc! Resurrect! Resurrection! Folks, don't go away! The crowd is gone when Ulrich finally resurrects and asks the carnival worker, Coralie, for some Italian food. Hey, you like Italian? <laughs> and the crowd rushes back in awe and excitement at his resurrection. Doc is counting the wad of money, saying 60% of their funds goes towards his research. <laughs> Ulrich doesn't care because he's got that hot date tonight, <laughs> so... <laughs> Stupid Ulrich! We cut back to narrating Ulrich in the coffin. That's one thing I'll say for old Doc Manfred. He wasted no time getting me killed again. We're now at the second show where Ulrich will be hanged to death. He's becoming a sensation and crowds are now gathering for miles around to see him die. After Coralie hesitates to pull the lever, Ulrich says, give me that shit, and pulls it himself <laughs> to hang, with the crowd roaring in applause. Moments later, he awakens and pulls himself up. There's an awful lot of money to die, is there? <laughs> as long as I get my percentage. Hey, Doc, no problem. I mean, after all, you're the guy counting the money, right? Hey, well, that wasn't my share. Narrator Ulrich tells us it was time he boosted his profits. Ulrich and Doc are now driving in the heavy rain, talking about how fascinating death is. Doc continues about how amazing it is that Ulrich's body can fix itself, and he's going to make them both so much money. You probably can see where this is going. Ulrich tells Doc he'll make a lot of money because Doc's about to die in a terrible car accident. It's the perfect crime because they'll both die. But Ulrich still has six lives left. No hot feelings, Doc. 
how do we feel about Ulrich at this point? Like, do we care about him anymore? Because that was, I feel like that was a real douchebag thing to do. Even though the doctor was kind of being douchebaggy, that was even more of a douchebag thing to do. I have, I have thoughts, but I'm kind of conflicted because on one hand, like I was saying, I would do with my life. Like now he doesn't have anyone to put a new cat gland in his brain. Or like, what if something exactly. goes wrong? You know what I mean? Like, that's it. He's gone. But... He was being sneaky as shit with the money. And I think that he definitely was getting dipped out of money. He was giving him 40%. So now, a resurrected Auric is back at the carnival, ready for his next stunt. This time, he'll be electrocuted to death by a lucky audience member whose name is drawn from a f***ing fishbowl. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it have been hilarious? if the chosen person was Niles and he was just chilling in the audience. <laughs> See, they know death is coming. I like that. It would have been a great way to like have that whole Tales from the Crypt universe thing born, you know? Missed opportunity, missed opportunity. It makes sense <laughs> for it to be Niles. What the hell? Yeah. Instead, it's an old lady. Ulrich hams it up and dedicates his death to poor, poor Dr. Manfred. A bystander yells, shut up and cook him. And I'm convinced it was actually Ray in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> when asked if she's ready, the old lady responds, you bet your ass I'm ready. That would have been like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, with the demonstration. Just <laughs> shut up and <laughs> cook him already. <laughs> I'm ready to die. <laughs> then no come. Go for it, Grandma. <laughs> this stuff feels different, though, as blood pours from Ulrich's eyes. The crowd awaits his resurrection, but he doesn't even budge. He's going for a new world record! That's one thing I hadn't figured. Some resurrections take longer than others. We are now at the morgue where a crowd of fans and photographers try to burst in. Coralie manages to get in, telling the mortician not to cut into Ulrich's corpse because he's not really dead. Ulrich wakes up and scares the shit out of that mortician. <laughs> That shit made me laugh the way he <laughs> fell back. <laughs> so Ulrich is at an all-time record for his slowest resurrection yet. Narrator Ulrich reveals how close a call it was, considering he was almost embalmed. To play it safe, he made special arrangements for his next death. We're now at the next stunt where audience members pay for a shot at Ulrich's heart. That'll be $1,000, please. Come on, come on, what's $1,000 when you have to kill a real human being? Yeah! No, well then, anchors away, Popeye. Okay, move away, move away. So after a nerd shoots and misses, a father and son team sign up. The baller of a father is just carrying around $1,000 in cash on him and positions his crybaby son to shoot the crossbow. It's clear that the son does not want to shoot him, but his dad insists that he stop being a pussy. <laughs> Well, some kids wanna... kill rabbits, you can kill people. Come on now, put your hand up. I don't want to kill anybody. Come on, I've been Aww. killing people for years, and now it's your turn. Come on, you can line it up. I love how that comment just slides like, no big deal, you know? Like, so what if his story was another Tales from the Crypt episode, and we see all the kills he actually committed? Mm. Smart. Robert Zemeckis hit me up. <laughs> the boy misses, and finally an archery champion signs up. Of course he nails it, and Oryx slowly dies as we see Coralie happily holding their profits from that night. When Oryx doesn't resurrect, the police want to take his body away. Coralie says she has a special arrangement with the deceased. But the police obviously don't give a shit. She hands the officer a huge wad of cash, and he accepts. And even helps her move the body. <laughs> oh my god. Morals out the window. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oryx is now alive and well, and he sees himself on a newspaper cover. The carnival boss comes by with all of Ulrich's earnings from the show. Box office take, HBO payola, and side betting money. $60,000. Ulrich wants to use that money to take a vacation with Coralie to Vegas, Bahamas, or maybe Paris. Polanski wants to film his life story. Coralie hesitates at the idea and suggests a better one as she pulls a comb, a knife out of her purse. <laughs> Sorry. Um, um, I gotta go now. No hard feelings ever, okay? Cause, um, just, you know, enjoy the rest of your, um, oh, bye, Mr. Friendly. The rest of your lives. Yeah! Look out, Vanna. Do 
do you wish we would have got a little more backstory from Coralie? Because I feel like her motive getting the money and leaving was kind of like simple, you mm-hmm. know? Like, I get it. You know, it's a short story. There's only so much you can put into an episode. I think it would have been a great trade off to like just actually have her motive be that she was actually working with like the boss to like get the money because Orrick all of a sudden, you know, started wanting a hundred percent. I think I don't even think they would have had to do anything like major behind the scenes. He could have literally just like winked at her one time. Exactly. And he That's been what like, I'm saying. Ah! You know? Yeah. That little moment right there would have been mm-hmm. enough. I feel like everybody would be like, oh, shit. You know, <laughs> <laughs> she's the boss (laughs) (laughs) narrator Ulrich is clearly still upset at her double cross she killed me and took the money that I died for well I still have one life left and this life is gonna pay me plenty we see Ulrich negotiating with the carnival boss for a hundred percent of the profits of his final stunt reminding him he's the reason the carnival is a big hit and after threatening to be a no-show the boss has to agree. And I don't know how you can live with yourself. I don't. So we're back where we started with the introduction of Ulrich's final act, the buried alive stunt. As he's being lowered, a chilling realization comes to mind. The cat who originally owned the nine lives gland had to die before the transfer, meaning the gland only had eight lives left. Ulrich starts freaking out and pounding on the coffin for help as this death would be final. Nobody hears his cries, and he's left screaming in the coffin until he can't scream anymore. Alas, poor Auric. Miss a bet. Though dying for dollars could have been a popular game show, they could have put it in between Wheel of Misfortune and the newly dead game. (laughs) Unless they buried it in the wrong time slot. So out of the whole episode, which one of these stunts was your favorite death? Hmm. Probably the one where he gets shot. That's like a pretty wild one. <laughs> the first one with the doctor? <laughs> no, said. no, not that one, but like that one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm tripping. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. The one but, where the, um, the archery guy yeah. came in and nailed him. For me, at least, I think my favorite one was the one where he drowned in the tank. I don't know. I thought it was dope. That was my favorite one. So, after all of this happened, final thoughts on the episode, and where do you think Coralie actually went? Maybe she went to Vegas, the Bahamas, or Paris by herself, because she did say that. She was like, oh, I'm going on vacation, or maybe I'll go, or whatever she said, so. And she took all of his money. Yeah, so maybe she's living in Paris now. Good for her. I'm not mad at her. She was mm-hmm. probably she was probably at this carnival being a slave to this boss for God knows how long. And she didn't murder him because she knew he had more lives. So it's like. That's true. That's true. It would be an easy way to get away without feeling too bad about it because you know he's going to come back. Now, we've seen three of these episodes so far on season one. Where do you rank this episode? And out of five stars, what do you give it? Okay. This was like a 4.5 out of five. Oh, really? Yeah, I liked this one. And then I would say this is my favorite one so far. Ooh. And then the second one, the Christmas one, is my second favorite. And then the first one's my last. I think the Christmas one was my favorite one. And then I would put episode three as number two. And then number one. Nows. I mean, number three would be the episode with Niles. <laughs> Niles is going to be in my top five somewhere this season just because of that cheese sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> like that forever will be hilarious to me. And other yeah. agencies. Cheese sandwich. Cup of coffee black. And my rating, I think I would give it like a four out of five, honestly. Like, it was fun. Definitely enjoyable. Super campy. From the very beginning, they were like, all right, we're going here with this. You got to believe that cats have nine lives. So they threw us right into that like imaginary world to where like we knew we just had to have fun with it. And that's it. Also, like that is the saying in real life that cats do it so that's kind of funny yeah cool. you know it's i mean you've heard that forever since you've been a kid so nice kitty Get! <laughs> all right so we're getting really close to the end here we're already halfway through the first season and episode four is called only sin deep and i think you would like this one a lot i don't want to say too much because 
you know, these episodes are short. It's easy to give away with like a little line, Mm -hmm. a synopsis. (laughs) Oh, this is something I actually wanted to bring up to you. So from the very beginning of this episode, it started to remind me of what we talked in episode one, right? How like people will watch someone get executed on TV Mm -hmm. and the fact that the audience potentially knows it's fake, they would still sit there and watch just to see if it would actually happen. I thought about that too. And I was going to tell you, I told you people will watch that shit. It just came to my mind right away when all these executions started happening. And I was just like, holy shit. I was like, we were definitely just we talking literally about just on talked episode to- one. Hope you enjoyed our little bedtime story, kids. Thank you all for tuning in. If you could please like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Horror Girl, I want to thank you again for joining me on this. And until next time, Horror Girl, you know what to do. Take us out. Bye. Boom. Bang. <laughs> <laughs>